Welcome to another great day in the outdoors of sports and tradition. Today we're out hunting turkey with my dad and my grandpa. It's three in the morning. I'm ready to go. I gotta go see if my kid is. Um, we decided to stay in the hotel this trip since with the uh, coronavirus stuff going on, the rooms are $30. Wake up, sunshine. Time to go hunting. Hey, let's go. Hey, you ready? Well, just like always, Bryce was ready to go. He had been a little upset recently after we had to postpone a trip to Texas to hunt Rio Grande turkey due to COVID-19. So we decided to grab an over-the-counter tag in Williams, Arizona, where we have never hunted turkey before. So we grabbed Grandpa, who knows the area pretty well, and see what we can do. We began the morning shot calling at a few known roost sites until we got a gobbler to talk back. We made a plan to go in and see if we can find his roost. We, uh, we had some birds this morning roosted up and uh, they were gobbling good. As soon as they hit the ground, they shut up and I don't know which way they went. So we're gonna make the move here and see if we can't figure out where they went. Well, that was just what we needed to get our blood pumping. We started to move a little closer to the gobbler when we bumped into some turkey, but they saw us first. Well, that was close. We just had five of them that we were on. They gave us a slip. We're gonna see if we can get around the mountain. We were on some turkey earlier and we're kind of following them and they're coming towards this tank. So we think that it's kind of like a coin flip. See if they'll come here, but we're gonna stay here for about an hour. See how it goes. The turkey we tried to get in front of never came, though we did get a surprise visit from another gobbler. Well, we were sitting in the hole and uh, RL was talking and uh, we had one gobble and then the second gobble was close, he was coming. And um, I thought I saw some movement in the trees and I think he was looking through the bushes trying to see if there was any turkeys there or he saw us, I don't know, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, I don't think he, I think he looked to where there and he didn't see any turkeys down there where, they, where he was hearing that one talk. And uh, either that or he caught, our, caught a movement, one of the two, I don't know. But yeah, they have pretty good eyes. He didn't, he hung up and didn't, uh, didn't come in, so. Didn't want to play. We gotta go find one that's gonna play. Yep. The rest of the day, the wind kicked up and the birds got silent. So we headed in to get a good night's rest to do it again in the morning. Stay tuned to the turkey hunt. Yeah, and we don't have any wind today so far. I don't want to jinx us. It rained last night and, and uh, it's a little bit warmer. Let's do it. We started this day in the same area we had the most activity the day before. The problem was the gobbles were far and in between, but we did get some responses from other critters. We weren't hearing very much activity from the turkey, but we did pick up one gobble and decided to work our way in that direction with our decoys and set up to try to call him in. Well, we sat here for about an hour and the birds had a serious case of the lockjaw. With nothing happening, we decided to make another move. The coyotes continued to howl as we walked back to the side-by-side, -side, so we grabbed a javelina in distress call and decided to have some fun. We brought them all the way to the tree line before they turned around. <laughs> well, 
Well, day two of the turkey hunt was proving tougher than day one. With the wind kicking up, the weather was cold, and the birds were quiet. We saw plenty of other critters, including coyote, elk, and plenty of deer. We got a chance to play with some of them. While walking, we bumped up some deer, and of course they ran from us, but we got out the call and brought them right back to us, and then across the road, behind us, they went. What we got here is the four or five calls that I like to use the best. Um, I've got the box call, I've got the slate. Some people call it a pot. Back east, they call it a pot call a lot, but it's a slate. Diaphragms, and then a turkey gobble. It will make you gobble. We also use a crow call or an owl hoot call um, early in the morning, just to shot gobble them uh, so we can get them lo located on the roost. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna grab each one of these calls and do a short demonstration with it. We'll start out with the diaphragm and uh, this is the diaphragm, and what that does is just goes in the top of your mouth. It just sits up in there, and then you, there's several different kind of calls you can get with it. One of them's just the, the um, cluck. That's just a, here I am, I'm okay, you know, everybody can be calm. And then there's the uh, the cackle, which is, that's, here I am, big boy, come get me. <laughs> it's just a real high-pitched thing, followed by a yelp, and then your standard yelp. From the standard yelp, you can go into a kiki run, which is basically a young a young turkey wanting to find the herd, the flock. Starts out real high and then goes right into a yelp. Um, these are this is my primary call. I do more calling with the the diaphragm than I do with any other ones. The other one is my slate call or pot call, and it's got two parts. It's got the slate and it's got the striker. And there's several calls you use on it. I like using this one for the purr, which is just you stick it up here. Turkeys, when they're feeding and they're content, they'll purr. And that's just telling the other turkeys, okay, yeah, I'm with you and we're okay, everything's fine. And you can do a yelp with it also. You can do a cluck. So, I mean, it's it's a versatile call, but I you like using it when they're coming in close or when I, if I got a bird roosted first thing in the morning and I get set up on them, I wanna just do some purrs. That's just telling that Tom, okay, I'm over here. I'm getting ready to fly down. You know, you can come to, come to me. The next one is the box call. Um, I don't use a box call a lot. It's it's unless it's really windy, and I'm trying to get some uh, volume out there to reach them. And you got to make sure you, the paddle always has to stay in contact. You don't want to do this. You want it's got to be one slow motion, just back and forth. It never never leaves contact. You can purr with it. But you can get you can get volume on this if you want. The harder you press, the louder the volume is.
You can put a rubber band on this so it holds it in place and shake it, and it'll do a, it'll do it, make it sound like a gobble. This particular box call also has a push pull call, which does your yelps. And if you combine them both. get what's called a fighting purr and that's when two toms are getting ready to fight over some hens. The last one and I don't use it very often because it is kind of dangerous to use and the reason you don't want to use it unless you're trying to locate if you're set up on a turkey and gobbling you don't want to use this because this is it sounds like a gobble and if you're in the woods especially since we hunt public land you could call in another hunter and he could then you're in a dangerous situation but it just all you do is you shake it but those are my basic calls that i use um done pretty good with them in the past the wind and the rain moved in that afternoon and the turkey stayed hidden it was a crazy day not a lot of birds but we sure had a lot of fun it's day three of the turkey hunt uh last night we were kind of put a lot of miles on it and everything looking for places to go and we found an area that is just full of sign, full of everything. It's an area that we want to be at. So we have to walk into it. So we're going to go drive up, park, walk in, and sit there for the morning. Yeah, we've already done our Pole family ritual that we're going to share with you. And that's we get up, we get in the truck, we pray for our family, we pray for our trip, we fist bump, and we listen to Aaron Lewis, Grandy, uh, what was, Grandfather's Gun. Come on, man. It's Granddaddy's Gun. Get some coffee. We are we hear gobbles all around us in the morning, so we set up with some decoys and start doing a little bit of calling. But once they hit the ground, they just went dead silent. So we're gonna have to go move around, see if we can see any. We pulled up to uh, make some calls <laughs> and um, we heard one gobble. I guess it spooked. Uh, it probably saw us. We probably went a little too far. I'm not sure. We had, we had a turkey gobbling at us a little while ago. We come up in here and you can see where the, the hens have come through here. It's all through here where they've scratched and that's what they do in there looking for food. They scratch out underneath the leaves and pick up the bugs and stuff. As we approached midday on day three, the turkeys just stopped again. And I can see the look in my son's eyes that he had about had enough. As much as we love hunting, we don't want to make this end on a bad note. Well, we've had two and a half hard days of hunting, huh, kid? Yep. Turkey didn't cooperate. Um, I think the hunt's about a week or two behind the prime time and we just heard some gobbles in the morning and a few gobbles when they got off the roost and it seemed like about nine to ten o'clock we'd get a few more but they weren't responding to any calls and uh that's hunting you've been blessed in your first uh four years of hunting you've been knocking everything down on opening day and maybe the i think one hunt your record turkey went to the first light of day two was the longest hunt you've ever had and so I, i'm i'm okay with that you know, it's normal as an outdoorsman and a parent to want your kid to succeed in every hunt he ever has. But we have to remember that when we try to push that to the extreme, it turns into a bad time for the kid. We have to learn how to enjoy and make this his hunt. And I'm glad that this one went three days. In closing, I remind you not to forget the fist bump and get them kids in the outdoors. Welcome to Sportsman's Tradition Outdoors. I'm freezing my butt off. I'm ready to go kill turkey. Let's go. Thanks for stopping by to visit us today on Sportsman's Tradition. It's another beautiful day in the outdoors. Until we see you again, take a kid hunting.